been bothering with this mathematics for all of us as therapists. We, we left mathematics, after all, to become therapists, so why, why do you have to be reminded of something you didn't want to do anymore? So I don't know, so I think I'll stop. Um, but the thing is that uh, this mathematical um, conceptualization tells us that complex systems will tend to move in a self-organizational process toward something called complexity, which seems totally irrelevant, right? But it's extremely relevant. When a system moves towards complexity, it has the features of being flexible and adaptive. So straight out of mathematics, you get this notion that, wow, even though no one's defined mental health in the field of mental health, maybe this would be an interesting place to start outside of our field. So you say, okay, well, if it's flexible and adaptive, what other are the features of it? Well, it's energized. It has a certain kind of stability to it besides flexibility. And it has this coherence, which has a mathematics to it where as the thing flows, it's embedding the things it encounters into its own definition, which is a mathematical way of describing emergence. So the point is, unlike a cohesive system, so if a patient comes to you with a narrative that says, you know, I'm a Martian, that's why I hate green, because my parents were green, and I'm trying to get away from everything my parents did. I mean, that's perfectly cohesive, right? Martians are green and getting away from parents, but it's not coherent. It's not embedding the continual flow of life into a flexible, fluid change of the boundaries of the system. And there's a beautiful book by Thergard called Coherence in Thought and Action, which is a, it's a mathematical book, but when you look at the mathematics of it, you see that there's a way in which we, as therapists, are looking to help people become coherent when they're stuck in cohesive states. And this is a crucial issue. And when you look at coherence and look at the whole idea of complexity theory and self-organization, here's what you get. You get the idea that when a system is moving toward complexity, it actually creates coherence, not cohesiveness. This is, the, this is the important issue. So whether you're working with a family or you're working with a couple or you're working with an individual, these principles all apply. So you say, okay, well, big deal. How is this useful? Well, it's useful because of the following thing that you can extract from these different approaches, which is the way a system achieves complexity is by linking differentiated parts. And this is the mind-blowing mathematical reality, that when you link differentiated components, you achieve maximal complexity. So you achieve this flexible, adaptive, coherent, energized, and stable state, which I will not make an acronym of. You can do that, because I promise you I'd only do two. Um, so that flow of coherence comes from integration. So you say, whoa, how, what, what then could you integrate? And what happens when you're not integrated? Well, here's what the theory tells you. When you're not integrated, you move away from this coherent flow, and you move toward rigidity, chaos, or both. Rigidity, chaos, or both. Rigidity when is when things are shut down. Totally predictable. Like a patient with PTSD, for example, who is avoiding going near the airport because they were in an accident, who's avoiding intimacy because they were sexually abused as a child. Or you're in chaos. You're flooded with memories that you can't control. You have feelings in your body that totally disrupt your life. And that's the chaos part. And you can have a flipping and flopping over where it creates massive dysfunction in your life. And if you open up the DSM, what are we on now? the DSM-4, 5, 5, 4, R, R, B, whatever. If you open up that document, that, that uh, committee-created document, and just open it up to any symptom, you will see it meets the criteria of rigidity, chaos, or both. So what I'm suggesting to you is that any form of psychopathology may be an impairment to integration. Now, I told you I was going insane, so I happened to meet, and I, I wish I could if this were a year later, I could say this publicly with details, but I can't say this following with details, so I can only say it obscurely, but get ready for this. So I'm sitting with this big, big scientist, and I said, uh, at a private lunch, and I'm saying, I'm going insane, because I'm teaching integration, I'm working integration, 
students in this room from me know we've been working on integration for a long time, and it's having this really 